Hello, everybody. It's Sasha here. Hi. And I am so excited. You don't even know. I have the most awesome person in the world today, and he's going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is expectations. Um, I, I, I love expectations. But today we have with us Art Costello. He is the author of Expectation Therapy. So we're going to have this really rocking conversation about expectations, what he does, how he does it, maybe not all the secrets, but some of them. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Now, anybody out there, we love you. And please feel free to share this with your friends, your family, your dog. This one's going to be a good one. Buckle in. Um, and what I'll do is I'm actually going to go ahead and say, hi, Art. Thank you so much for joining me. Why don't you introduce yourself and say hi to our audience? Hi, Sasha. I'm Art Costello from Austin, Texas. And uh, I'm an author speaker, but I research on expectations and how they affect our lives. And uh, I'm excited to be here and get this thing rolling. People will, will be amazed at what they will learn today and what expectations can do in their lives. And, and it's, it's startling, isn't it? And I, I really want you to dive right in and, and tell us what is expectation therapy? Because that is your, your core, that's your lifeblood, and that's what we're here to talk about. Expectation therapy started when I was really nine years old and went to a mountaintop and had a conversation with God in the universe and started listening to my intuitive self because I had been in a place that was less than uh, ideal for a nine-year-old. I was feeling abandoned, lost. Uh, the way the story goes is I was, uh, baseball has always been my thing. And my parents moved us from an urban area to a very rural area and I literally had no neighbors within two miles of us. And to give you an idea, 20 kids in uh, my high school class when I graduated. So, but anyway, it was, uh, it was just a time in my life where I had felt abandoned and lost and lonely, disconnected, disengaged. And I had no one to talk to about. My parents were not parents that uh, were engaging and with their children or even had good parenting skills. So my only uh, refuge was to go to the top of this hill and have these conversations. And I started listening to this voice inside of me that said, everything is going to be okay if you just keep doing it, if you just keep, keep going. So as through the course of my life, I went in the Marine Corps, um, had experiences over there, as you can imagine, then uh, life just kind of took over. But I've always had this thing inside of me that everything I do is I have this expectation that it's going to be okay in the end. Everything always works out. So I, I lived with that through most of my life. Then in 2006, I had been married for 35 years and my wife uh, passed away from ovarian cancer and I lost it. So after about two years of being a jackass and <laughs> and not acting very nice and really depressed and trying to figure out where I was going, I had the I got so tired of it. I had this conversation with God in the universe again that you know I would you know what was going to happen to me. You know here I am, sixty three years old, and just wondering what in the world's going on. And I got down on my knees and prayed again. Heard this voice that said. You have all the tools, you just need to apply them. And it was so invigorating to me. I got back up and I started actually developing expectation therapy. And that's how it started. Because I look back over my life and I realized that my expectations, what has always kept me so positive, so uh, active, so engaged, and, and just full of life. I mean, that's one of the questions I always get from people is, you're always happy all the time. And it's because I expect to be, not only expect it, but it's ingrained in me that everything's gonna be okay. So I live this fearless life. I've done everything I've ever wanted to do. I, I'm just a doer and just go live it to the fullest. But when I started putting it all together and started doing the research, I realized that, it, that we have a seed of expectation that's planted deep inside of us. I actually think it's there, there's a DNA uh, component to it. But let's just understand that you have 
at birth. Think about a child that's coming out of the womb, can't take care of itself. What, what is the first expectation that you have that you're going to be fed, you're going to be taken care of, you're going to be nurtured and cared for, and then we progress from there and our expectations become more social and more legal expectations and we go through all that. But our expectations, if you, if you don't nurture a child, they're going to be disconnected. And that's because their expectations haven't been met as a child. At least this is my, my theory. So what I did through my years of education and everything, I took a, 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 a formula out of physics. It's called the formula of expectation, where scientists use this formula to uh, predict what is what the expectancy is of a, of a project they're going to do or a, a, a an event that they want. And I took that formula and I turned it into a behavioral formula and we created expectation or I created expectation therapy out of that where we have a specific set of uh, protocol that you go through and uh, it's very effective, it's powerful, it provides immediate changes that people start to see when, the, when it's applied and it will it really transforms lives and really makes a huge difference. That, I, I, that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how how, how many of these changed your life? Golly. <laughs> I, you know, the biggest changes in my life is, is that uh, everything that I've ever done, it just has created this very powerful uh, persona that I have because it makes me fearless because once you ex know and have faith, you know, it really makes you stronger. And so I've always approached everything from the sense of faith and not fear because fear is what destroys and stops everybody from doing what they, what they do. And we only see our expectations through two lenses, either faith or fear. And Faith changes everything, it, you know, and faith isn't necessarily a religious thing. It can be, it, it is for me. I mean, it's, it's very powerful in my life, but I understand that all people aren't like me. And some people, it can be in a coach, it can be in a teacher, uh, it can be in a parent, it can be the most important one is in yourself because, and that's what happened to me. It's once I had faith in myself, and I think it was coupled with a couple of things, going in the Marines and becoming a Marine and very confident about what my skill sets were. Uh, and it all just congealed and uh, has created this life. I've always done everything that I want. I mean, it, it just I've always done everything that I've wanted and I've done it with relative success. But I look at, at everything as a learning experience. Nothing is a failure in my life. I see no failures uh, because as long as I learn something from it and start to move forward and start to uh, um, just get positive and keep going, it there isn't there can't be a failure because I've learned I've learned the lesson out of it and I see everything as a lesson. I believe that that's that's the key to life is learning the lessons and applying them and and growing and growing and just becoming who you were meant to be, so. Exactly, well, and, I mean, you can't fail if you never stop trying. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> uh, now, I wanna talk a little bit more about the program that you have coming out here soon, but before we do that, we have a question from our audience. Russell would like to know what, what some warning signs are, why, why would somebody be compelled to get expectation therapy? Well, if they're if they want to make immediate changes in their life, whether it be transitioning or a lot of different events in your life, what the compelling part of it is is that we get to the root of the problem very quick, uh, and it it takes hold very quick. And when you start applying the principles that you're taught, you will see immediate results and that's what makes it so powerful is the results are immediate if you're having difficulties family difficulties and you start applying these things i've had people 
who have, have had great trauma in their lives and great challenges. And once they start applying the principles, things change very quickly. And of course, we all know that when you meet immediate gratification, it, it's very heartwarming. It wants you to do more and you want to start learning more and you start progressing. It gets you out of that stuck phase. If you are stuck in a job, if you're stuck in a marriage, if you're stuck in life just in general, this can just have incredible amounts of, uh, it gives you knowledge and a, a place to launch from. Doesn't matter. You know, I, one of the things with me is that, you know, the past is in the past. You can't change it. You can't do anything about it. My thing is just push it back in, into its place and start living for now. It's about living in the here and now, in this moment. Because when you live in this moment, you have all the control. And that's another thing that expectation therapy does. It puts you in the driver's seat. You have control of your life and you take that control that you're nowadays there's everybody's trying to control us. I mean, from politics to, to schools to everything, everybody's trying to control us. It gives you the power back. It takes you from being a, a, a participant to being a leader. You know, you start to get the leadership skills and you start to develop those things. And that's what we see when people go through the program is they start to take control of their life and move forward and they start enjoying things more. They, their self-worth goes up, their, their self, uh, um, self-awareness comes, comes up and uh, their determination. Um, there's so many things that it does because of it being one of the most basic of tools that we have to control our life is our expectations. That's why when people say, I don't, I don't expect anything, I, you know, what I do is I'll ask them to take their right hand and put it over their mouth, their left hand and put it over their nose. And then when they say, I can't breathe, but you're expecting to breathe. It's, it's so basic to life. Our expectations is so basic that, you know, it, it just catapults us to, to being creative, to being uh, powerful. I mean, there's so many elements that are connected to it. Trouble is that because we have so many expectations every day, I challenge anyone listening to this to think of one thing you do that does not have an expectation attached to it. I mean everything. And I've had people come up with some wing dingers, but I'll guarantee you, I can tell them, <laughs> you know, this is, this is where the expectation is. We just don't realize it because we have so many of them. So expectations are kind of like, uh, kind of like taking a shower or brushing our teeth every day. We have them and we do it so often and we do it so repetitively that we lose the uh, consciousness and the self-awareness of what the power is in an expectation. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful tool. Well, I guess it would be kind of like breathing. You do it all the time. You forget that you're doing it. And I mean, expectations, so I would almost say that that's a survival skill, right? I mean, we have expectations. Those are expectations are what help us move forward, but we're not cavemen. We're not surviving off of, you know, our wits all the time. And I think that's where human beings get those expectations all twisted around. <laughs> now, is there anybody that expectation therapy won't help? I mean, I was going to ask you, you know, who does this benefit? But really, who doesn't it benefit? It benefits everybody because we all have expectations. Every one of us. It can help a child. It can help adolescents. It can help adults. It can help even, even people who are retired. I mean, it's a big thing with me, you know, now that I've, I've gotten older. <laughs> you know, we, we have such a store of knowledge sitting in, uh, rocking chairs because they've been told all their life. When you hit 60 or 55 even now and you retire that you can just vegetate. Well, that's why we see, our, we see people not enthusiastic about living anymore. And we hear about couples that 
pass away together within months of each other because once that expectation of your spouse being there and all that, it, 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 expectations have so much power over our lives and it's such a great tool and it's so easy to use. That's what is so powerful about the program is that it's so basic. It's not complicated. It's not anything you need to, to put a great deal of thought in. It's a, it's a matter of tweaking your perspective and what you expect out of life and what you expect out of others. A lot of people talk about expectations are the root of disappointment. I can't remember, was it Shakespeare that said, I think it was Shakespeare that said it. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Anyway, that is so, it, 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 there's a lot of truth in it because if you'll think about the child that isn't nurtured, and it doesn't get nurtured, it learns its disassociation with its expectations. And I believe that the root of, uh, of, de of depression is first step of it is uh, unmet expectations. You start getting uh, your expectations not met by your spouse and pretty soon you get disappointed. And then, you know, pretty soon it starts taking over chemically and your whole body chemistry changes. And, you know, then it becomes a huge problem. So uh, we can do a lot of work with depression. Uh, I believe with PTSD, uh, with, uh, with expectations, because it is at the root of so much of what and how we think and how we react. And reaction is is huge in our lives. It's, it's how we react to things that makes all the difference. Absolutely. And it's also the only things we can control is our own reactions to things, right? Exactly. Uh, and, and I think that's great. Now, I know that there's going to be people out there wondering, uh, with, your, with expectation therapy, it, does it start with awareness? Because, I mean, we're, we're sitting here saying expectations are almost inherent in what we do and how we think I mean, and how we process information. How do we get in front of something that's inherent? And I'm thinking the answer is awareness. True. And that's the first step in expectation therapy is taking, and I always tell people to find their happy place. Mine was on top of the hill, having a conversation. Some people like to go out in a boat, just lay on the deck and, you know, it, it, you, you know where your happy place is. Everybody knows where they just find this peace and comfort. Uh, matter of fact, when I work with people, sometimes we'll just go outside and we'll lay on the lawn and just look up at the sky. It's very relaxing and all that. But it is to go into this deep contemplative state where you start examining in your, in your gut. You know, you start listening to your gut and you start connecting with your body and your mind and start laying the plans out, start thinking about what you really want, how you want it, and all of those things. So that's the first step in it, actually, is going out and becoming uh, self-aware, self-conscious, and uh, contemplative, and uh, just start really digging into yourself. It's and easy. I, uh it's easy. You know, you make, you make it sound easy. It's not easy, but you make it sound really easy. <laughs> you can do it. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the ability to let yourself relax and don't expect. See, in my book, I write about uh, the difference between expect, what's the, how it, how it works uh, in our mind. Because if, if um, I think in order to learn how to expect, you need to almost get into a Zen-like state to get reconnect with your body and your mind. So people ask me often, is there any time when you don't expect? And yes, there is. There's a time that everybody, I think during meditation, prayer, all of those things that we do to relax are the time when we throw out all the expectations out of our lives and we just contemplate what what's going on sometimes we don't even contemplate sometimes we're just zoned in on relaxing and i think it helps you relax even more once you can get to that space 
you know, Absolutely. when we, when we sleep, you know, we, you know, you put all your expectations aside and you go into a, you know, a REM sleep, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's powerful. Absolutely. And for anybody who's watching this and who is just so eager to read the book, because you really should, I posted the link in the little chat thingamajigger. So please check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, I know that as much as you would love to work with each and every one of us individually all the time, because that's the amazing kind of man that you are, I also know that you are working on teaching coaches how to train on expectation therapy. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about your expectation therapy for coaching? What we have done is we've designed a course, and it, it's really interchangeable with everything, because in the course we're taking it, we're teaching all of the basic skills to take your coaching level to a new, we're giving you a new tool to use. I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to replace anything or anything like that. This is another tool to have in your tool chest because there's gonna be a time, I guarantee it, you can use it. And if you'll use it as an opening tool in any kind of life coaching that you do or therapy that you do, I believe you can get the results quicker, faster, and it enhances the rest of your practice. And once you do that, word of mouth starts going because people see immediate results and they feel satisfied. I have often, you know, people say, I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to a therapist or a coach and I've got no results. And I spend two hours with you and I, I feel like I've moved yards and miles ahead of where I've been before. So what we're doing is teaching coaches. We're teaching therapists. We're teaching uh, this, this very simple skill sets that they need to use to get their uh, clients to move forward and uh, apply these principles. That's what the course is about. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think it's a great course because if we enable our clients to be able to feel this instant gratification, we're further enabling ourselves to be able to help more people. And I mean, what coach out there isn't trying to help more people? I dabble in some coaching. It's it's hand in hand with what I do with uh, business owners. Why wouldn't I want to help? Uh, so I think it's it's a really awesome course. Now, what is different in learning expectations for oneself as opposed to learning it to teach to someone else? <laughs> there's really no difference because once you learn it and start applying the principles, it, the principles in, in the system is based on the individual. It forces the individual to take responsibility for them. One of the things that uh, a lot of clients want is they want you to fix them. Well, you and I both know we cannot fix anybody. Nope. You, have, you have to want to fix yourself. And this leads them to how to fix themselves, how to take a new skill set. So it's no different for a coach. It's no different for any professional. It's no different for a business owner. You can take these principles and teach them to your leadership team and change the core beliefs of your whole entire organization in a, in a, in a corporate setting. It will transform it, I guarantee it. I mean, it is so powerful in, in transformation that, and that's what attracts all the new clients and the new people, because once you start doing that, it just gives you a new powerful tool to offer and they see results quickly and that's what people want. They don't want to have to deal with a long two year therapy, uh, coaching, whatever you want to call it, you know, that it, it just gets too cumbersome, be, cumbersome because they can't see that far. But when they start seeing the immediate results, everything changes. It really changes how their perspective on what they're receiving and what they're getting. And the value is so great to them that they tell everybody else. I mean, I can't tell you the people who have told other people when I've worked with them, you know, I mean, who have referred people, you know, just it's when it works, it works, you know, 
I believe it. Absolutely. And I, I think that the program is fantastic. I will make sure to drop that link down there below as well. Um, because I, I think it's a great program for coaches, for anybody who's dealing with other people on a regular basis or well, even dealing with themselves on a regular basis. Um, so I really, oh, gosh, I love the idea of expectation therapy and I really want to give our, our viewers something to kind of wet their whistle. What What is one thing that they can take home, that they can do today? I mean, other than clearly reading your book, because that's what they need to do. Uh, but other than reading your book right now, what's one thing that they can take with them that will help prepare them for a shift in their expectations? Because that confidence piece is so important to a lot of us. I think the one thing that I would, that I always tell people is to become mindful of their expectations. Because once you become mindful, of your expectations and you start realizing how much they are, it almost helps you become clearer and you gain clarity through that. So I think mindfulness is the one thing I would tell people to become in tune with themselves, with their own expectations when they start listening. And I, I'll bring something up real quick that I've been noticing and I, I'd like to take uh, credit for this, but I know I can't. <laughs> Have you noticed? <laughs> Have you noticed a lot of the car commercials? Like the Buick now says, meet or exceed your expectations. So many commercials now are starting to talk about positive expectations, where before they used to talk about negative expectations, fear of loss. If you don't come by my car today, it's going to be gone, you know, or that. Right. And if you'll start to notice that, become mindful of these commercials and see the companies that are starting to use positive expectations in their commercials where they actually say, you know, we need or exceed your expectations. It, it's, it's, I, I'm very aware of it because I am very in tune to it. So I see it all the time. But to me, that's so gratifying because I like to think that I'm, it's starting to take traction. It's starting to, people are starting to really realize what it can do. Advertisers, if I could get to advertisers and tell them the power that they have in their hands by talking about positive expectations and, and doing positive things, government, the same thing. I could change government if they would listen and get off of their high horse on some of this stuff. We don't want to go there, but anyway. Bye, bye. But that means that you're in your way, you're the first of change, and you're watchable change. And that's exciting. Um, Russell wants to know, do you ever just fall into random, random conversations with strangers about expectation therapy? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> uh, good example, uh, Southwest flight flying from Austin. Uh, can't remember where I was flying to, but uh, one of the stewardesses on there knew that I – speak about expectations and I, we struck up a conversation and pretty soon it turned into the whole back of the plane, listening to my presentation on expectations and having people go, holy mackerel, I never understood or thought about expectations and that, that light, you know, that they are so powerful and it's such a tool. So I'm, it's all the time. I mean, if you get within three feet of me, <laughs> you're going to hear about expectations. <laughs> It, it's true, but that's a good thing to hear about. What would you say, and this, I swear, my last question <laughs> before I let you on your way. Uh, what would you say, if it, I mean, to our audience out there and anybody who's listening now on the replay later, whether they've shared it otherwise, doesn't matter. If they're, if they're watching this, what, what message do you want them to understand? That they have the power to change. They have the power to transition. That uh, it's a choice and that they, they are in control. And if you can control your expectations and all the elements that are around it, emotional intelligence and have all those skill sets in place, anything that comes your way, you can handle it. I guarantee, I know it because I've lived it. I've lived it. I mean, do you Vietnam, feel that, um, expectations and your your expectation that you can survive you can make it through you can move forward has been the reason that you've been able to accomplish all that you have absolutely if i didn't if i didn't expect in a positive way i would have never achieved i would have i mean 
think I, I think back of in living in that small town. Had I not had any positive expectations or not had the faith that in confidence of myself to go in the Marine Corps and gain the skills in the Marine Corps uh, to live and understand physically, I had the capabilities to to survive. I'd be still in that little town. I'd probably be an alcoholic. I'd probably not be living a very good life and not have everything that I have now, the beautiful family that I have and all the, all the riches. And I don't count money as a rich. It's not, it's, it's the happiness that I've had helping people throughout my life, the happiness that I've created in other people, knowing that they can change their lives and that they, that there is always hope. You just have to get through the immediate transition to getting from hopeless to hopeful. And once you make that transition and you make it through having positive expectations, your life will. That's, you know, one of the things we always talk about is adversity builds character and expectations are what build the, the character in us, you know, having positive expectations, knowing that we have faith and knowing that in the end, it's always going to be right. And that would be the one thought that I would leave you with. If you can get it in your mind that everything happens for a reason and there's a purpose in everything. And in the end, we are all right. We are going to get right where we're supposed to be. I'm just doing what, what I'm supposed to do, you know, helping others, caring about people, trying to help. And uh, that's, that's been the story of my life. So. Well, it's a great story. It's it's absolutely it blessing. I call it a blessing. <laughs> it is a blessing. And it's been a blessing to have you here as well with me. Um, guys, if you want to go and check this out at any point, you can visit expectationtherapy.com. Uh, Art has a wonderful site. He's got an amazing book. If, go get the book. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for shaping your expectations to shape your world. And Art, Art really knows his stuff. So go and check out his book. Thank you so much, Art. We really, really appreciate having you here. One more thing. Expect yes, please. HTTP Expectation Academy if you want to join the course. Oh, I should put that one up too. Uh, uh, expectation. But did you know it's really hard to spell that sometimes? Academy.com, right? Expectation Academy? Dot com. Correct. Ha, 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 wonderful. And check it out, Expectation Academy. It's it's amazing, great for coaches or anybody in business, really, at all, trust me. Um, and again, expectationtherapy.com. Thank you so much, Art. I really, really appreciate having you here with me. Thank you, Sasha. I appreciate you. Bye, everybody.